Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to be back with you. It's been a little while. We've had a few things happen in our life um, in, the, in the last couple of years since we've seen you guys. Uh, we arrived home from Texas at the end of 2010 to find out that my wife was expecting. And so we had a bit of a, a, bit of a Sabbath year from traveling last year. It was really cool. We had a, a bit of a time off in Australia and God did some really amazing things there. I really just had it in my heart that the Lord told me not to travel so much while Vicky was uh, expecting and, and while the baby was young. So the baby's just turned one year old and uh, we're, I'm just kind of here right now to plan out when we come back to the US through your summertime. And we're going to be here for about three months traveling all over the nation, God willing. And uh, we've got some time out in California and up north as well, a fair bit of time in Texas. But uh, when I got home uh, at the end of 2010, I really just had it in my heart that God was going to do something in Australia. And I said, Lord, if we're not going to travel so much uh, while, while Vicky and the kids are just resting here at home, because the kids have been on the road with us quite a lot as well, the other kids, we've now got five children, one boy and four girls, glory to God. <laughs> you know, who says, who, who says that, that God's not able? Amen. We wanted to have a big family, and then God called us to travel in ministry, and we're like, well, God, you're obviously going to provide for us to have a big family and to travel and to do all those things, and glory to God, you know, we've just been seeing God move in Australia and, and around the world, and who says you can't do what God calls you to do, amen? amen. You know, you can do what God has burned in your heart for you to do with your life, and and our God will not be held back by anything, I believe. And so I was praying, Lord, let us see the miracles in Australia like we've been seeing them in the other nations that we go to. And Australia, people have this confession over our nation. Oh, it's a hard land here. It's a dry land here. And all this stuff, it's just all talk, really, you know. <laughs> if you talk yourself into it, you're going to believe it. You know, well, I'll, I might just talk myself into the Word of God, amen, and believe yeah. on that. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so I said, Lord, Lord, let us see the things happening here in Australia like we've been seeing them overseas. We've been praying for all sorts of things and seeing God move. And it's really exciting seeing people get out of wheelchairs and blind eyes open up. And, yeah. and so I just had this thing in my heart, Lord, let us see it in Australia. Let us see it here. And it's just been awesome. I was praying at this church uh, at one time and, and God just told me there's people with vision issues that's gonna, that are going to get healed here today. And so I just released that word, and this man just came out from one of the seats, and he came out, and he, he was a 90-year-old man, and he came bouncing forward. <laughs> and he says, I'm 90 years of age, and, and I've seen every move of God that's happened in this country. And you're going to pray for me, and I'm going to get healed. And I said, well, what's wrong with your eyes? He said, I can't really see. <laughs> wow. and, and I said, well, no pressure. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Well, my flesh was saying that. You know, you ever have that when, when you really feel like God is excited about something in your life and you, then you look at it with your flesh and you go, wow, oh, it's pretty big. You know, well, that, that happens to all of us. But hey, he who is in us is greater than he who's in the world. Oh, yeah. and, and so I prayed for this guy and I said, which one's the worst? And he said, it's this one. I think it was his left eye. So we just laid our hands on him. And pray and just said, in Jesus' name, I command these eyes to be, this eye to be healed. And just like that, he, he opened up his eyes and he said, well, that one's good now. I said, well, well, what do you mean that one's good now? He said, well, I couldn't see out of it before. I said, can you see out of it now? He's like, yeah. <laughs> so he just gave the, gave the glory to the Lord. And then I prayed for his other eye and nothing happened. And I really felt God... As I travel, he doesn't want me to just preach a message and demonstrate. I really feel the burden to release the gifts of the Holy Spirit into other people. Amen. And so I said, Lord, what am I going to do now? He hasn't been healed. What, what's, what's next? Holy Ghost. <laughs> and, and he said, get him praying for people. So there's a lady there who had fibromyalgia, which is, uh, I guess, it's a, uh, I don't, I'm not really that medical, but uh, it's, a, it's a, a disease where people have extreme pain in their joints and in their bones and in their muscles and this lady came forward and her testimony was that she has to have her drugs next to her when she goes to bed so that when she wakes up in the morning she got the painkillers and she usually lays in the bed for about an hour after having the painkillers and it's then that she can get out of work out of bed and, and face the day go to work so she uh <clears throat> we prayed for her and she starts shaking and she says i'm feeling all hot in my body i'm feeling all hot i'm feeling heat in my joints and the Bible says that our God's a consuming fire, amen? Yeah. And so we prayed for her, 
Uh, this, this, I, I didn't actually pray. The, the, this man, this 90-year-old guy, he prayed for her. And she fell down on the ground and she's shaking on the ground. I said, after a couple of minutes, come on, let's, let's stand up and see how you're doing. And she's all shaky. She says, I can't feel any pain in my bones anymore. I can't feel any pain in my joints anymore. And we just gave the glory to the Lord. Amen. And then, Amen. And so, she, uh, so she stands up and she kind of gets her bearings again and, 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 and ends up... Uh, just going, being a part of the, the ministry and this guy, I just said, come on now, you pray for this one over here and we're just praying for these different people and one guy there, he had busted knees and his knees just got instantly healed like that and then another guy that was there, another lady I should say, she had um, spinal damage from, from, being in a, from being in a car accident she had three of her discs were all messed up, we prayed for her and all of the pain went out of her body, just like that. And I just believe that the things of the Holy Spirit are simple, amen. I amen. believe that the power of God is really, he's just, he's just more able than we can even understand. And so as that, uh, as that whole episode went on, um, a couple of days later, I got an email from this lady who had the fibromyalgia problem. And she said, the pain has been getting less and less every day since church on, on Sunday. And even to the point where this morning I got out of bed without my pain medication for the first time in four years. Amen. 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 Glory to God. So she, so, she, uh, so she says to me, the pain's not all gone, but, but I'm doing really well through the days and um, I'm not taking the medication through the days while I'm teaching. Because this, this church that I was preaching at, they have a, they have a school there. And as, the, as time went on, uh, in, uh, she sent this email to me and I got it one morning and I, and I replied and I said, well, I'm just going to keep believing that the Holy Spirit's going to do a completed work of healing in you and you're going to have a testimony for the doctors and you're going to have a testimony for your family. And so she emails me back and she says, I got this email at recess um, during the school break and, and I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of the day because as soon as I got your email, I started shaking again and I could feel the Holy Spirit all over me in my body. You know, I just believe that we just don't put, we don't put any limitations on the Holy Spirit, amen? amen? If the Word of God says it, well, that's what God can do and it's His business to prove his word true. You know, you and I, we don't have to prove his word true. You know, he's already proved himself to us. And it's not our job to go and prove God to the world around us. It's not our job to go and make it happen and force it in our own will or in our own flesh. But we just stand in faith, amen. We say, God, I believe on your word and I'm going to stand on your word and I'm going to allow you to be the one who gets the glory when it all comes together, amen. amen. Hallelujah. I was down at another church. Let me tell you one more story before I get, get on too much. Um, I was down at another church and I, I really had God tell me uh, to pray for people with life-threatening illnesses. And, and you know, sometimes when, when you see a big thing like, like that in your mind, you can be, be a little bit intimidated, like, oh, it's okay for Pastor Glenn to get the word fracture, and then there's a, a gentleman over here with a fracture. Well, that's Pastor Glenn. Oh, come on, he's the pastor of the church, you know. He's a full-time minister of the all God Almighty. Yeah, he is, but he's still flesh and bone. Amen. Amen. And what are you made of? Uh, you're made of the same stuff as him. Hallelujah. And, and and there's no more worth in him or in me or Pastor Jake than is within you. You're, you're redeemed by the same blood of Jesus that redeems amen. us. Amen. We're just sinners saved by grace. All of us. Amen. amen. Underneath this robe of righteousness it is the stuff that was there before. And it's only going to be when Jesus comes back that it's taken away. So right now, he's just calling us to walk by faith and not by sight, amen? amen. And so I had this, this issue within my flesh, and I think we all struggle with issues in our flesh time and again. And, and so I just got to the, the end of this meeting, and it was, like the first meeting was at 8 o'clock, and there was about, oh, there's, there's probably five or 600 in that meeting, but the big meeting is the 10 o'clock, and there's about 12 or 1,500 in that, depending on the week. And I was like, I was like at the end of the 800, you, you want me to give this word now, Lord? And he's like, no. No, you just wait until the next service and you can give it in the next service. I was like, okay. And you, 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 we, we struggle with these things in our flesh. Of what if I say it and I'm, I'm moving by faith out of my heart, but what if it was just too much pizza from the night before or too much Diet Coke before I came in and I was getting a bit crazy in the back of my head? But we have these questions about ourselves, don't we? But you know what? He who is in us is greater than he who's in the world. Yeah. And so I just released it at the second service and there was a whole lot of people come forward and there's more services to do through the day and you've got to run with the time schedule. And I had 15 minutes to minister to about 150 people who came forward for prayer that day. And I'm like, oh Lord, I've got to squeeze my faith into 15 minutes. You're going to have to do this. Lord, I can't do it, but hey, that's okay. It's because he's the one who has to confirm his word, not me. Amen. So I'm, I said to everybody, all right, there's a few of us here. 
Now, give me one word when I come to the prayer line to pray for you. Just one word. That's all I can have because there's so many of us here. So, okay, everybody, this lady says cancer. So we pray for cancer. A month and a half later, I'm back in the church and I'm releasing my first book in the church, which isn't quite ready yet, but I'll have it ready soon in, in the US. Like hopefully by the end of this week. But I'm, I'm signing the books and she comes up to me after the service and she says, Hey, Tosh, I've just got to tell you something. I'm so excited about what, what happened since the last time I saw you preach here. And I said, well, what was, what's, what's that? She said, well, you pray for people with life-threatening illnesses. And my cousin is down in Melbourne, which is a city which is uh, about two days' drive. So it's about 1,200 uh, miles from, from Brisbane City, 2,000 kilometers from Brisbane City, which is my city. And, and he was down there going back into the hospital for uh, checkups and, and radiotherapy on his, his terminal cancer. He had one lung that was completely eaten through by cancer and the other lung, which was, there was an aggressive cancer chewing through that other lung. And, and so he, we just prayed for him in the prayer line and he went back in a couple of days after that Sunday and the doctors couldn't understand what they saw when they examined him. Amen. Because, let me tell you what happened there. There was the, the, the lung that had the com cancer completely eat through it was totally restored. And the lung that had the cancer chewing through it was now in remission. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. These are the days of us seeing the Spirit of God move. I remember the first time I came to Austin, I was just sharing with Paul before we before uh, we, we, we started the service here today. I remember the first days of me coming to Austin. There was people talking like, we're just believing to see God's going to do something in the city. We're believing to see God's going to minister healing in our churches. And here at the start of the service right here, there's healing just being ministered out. I just have seen such a change in this city. And I believe what we've seen is just the beginning, amen? amen. God's going to do greater and greater and greater things. So yes. if you've got your Bibles, please turn them to the book of the Psalms. We're going to go to Psalm 91. In yes. verse 1. And I want to talk this morning, if you want to put a title on this sermon, I will just want to call this Our Connection to the Holy Spirit. And, and I believe like the most powerful things in God are the simple things. Really and truly, the most powerful things are the simple things. Simple things like, oh, uh, what do we do here, God? We're coming into the promised land. We've got no idea what to do. And God says, well, just go march around the city seven times. <laughs> like, What? As he, now, we can read that in history, and we can say, well, of course, that was the word of the Lord. But do you go putting yourself back in their day, march around the city, what, what are you talking about? What, they just went and did what God told them to do, amen? And I don't think life gets a lot more complicated than just do what God's telling us to do. And then when we do what God's telling us to do, He turns up, and He displays His power, and hallelujah, we can just walk into a city with no walls, amen? amen. And that's how, God, that's how God works, I believe. And I just want to, I just want to encourage us all this morning. Like the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with Him. We have a spiritual connection to God Most High that cannot be shaken by the things of this world. The things of this world are only the things of this world. But the connection that we have with God supersedes the things of this world, like Pastor Glenn was talking about this morning. Where our connection to God is on a higher level than the connection that we have to anything in this world. Amen. Men, it's on a higher connection than we even have with our wives, emotionally, um, financially, physically. Uh, wives, it's on a higher connection that you even have with your husbands. Because it's, it's on the interior piece of your world. It's somewhere below your flesh, in deep down in your heart. And there's something that can't be shaken. What about the Apostle Paul when he was getting whipped as a citizen of Rome um, in, the, in the city of Corinth? What kept him getting whipped when he didn't have to be whipped? All he had to say was, hey, look, I'm a citizen. You can't whip me. And they would say, well, you're a citizen. Well, we better give you a trial first. But he took that beating on his back in, 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 in the city of Philippi because the church was under the heel of the local authorities. And when they whipped Paul, he just took that beating. He took it. And at the end of the day, they were going to send him out of jail. And he says, no, 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 no. You're not sending me out of jail because I'm a citizen and you whipped me. You know what that means? That that person who did that had to go before Caesar. And generally, the, uh, the, the, the consequence for whipping a, a citizen of Rome was death. So they were packing it. And, and you know what Paul said? I'm not oh, going to leave the city because it's time for me to go. But I tell you what, you and all the elders of the city, you know, uh, they're going to escort me out of this city. And by Paul's beating, he elevated the prestige and he gave credibility to the work of God in the city of Philippi. Now what, what, what keeps a man of God, what keeps a person suffering injustice like that? 
It's his connection to God. Amen. You know, all the, the beatings and the whippings that he took, it was just the Holy Spirit's comfort with him. Amen. We can comfort others with the comfort by which we've, been, we've received from God ourselves. And that's our walk with the Lord. It's not just a walk in doctrine. Our God is a consuming fire. Our God is not only a God of doctrine. He's a living spirit. Amen. He, the, our, the Bible tells us that He is the living God. And where you face your challenges as you walk out of this church door, the living God is with you. Not just the God of doctrine, but the God of power. Hallelujah. Amen. The God of reality. The God of the real world. The God of Monday. The God of Thursday, as well as the God of Sunday. Amen. Amen. The God that we're experiencing in here in worship is the same God that I believe we're going to, just going to start seeing our neighbors and our friends and our family experience just as we reach out to them. Amen? And in this passage here, I think it really just highlights for us the simplicity of our connection with God. It says here in Psalm 91 verse 1, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, and in Him I will trust. Now, if we just have a look at that quickly, at the start of it, it really gives us a bit of a formula, a bit of a recipe about, about walking in the presence of God, about staying connected to God. And it's not complicated. The language in the, in the original Hebrew here, it sort of reads a little bit like this. He who deliberately goes into the, into the, into the, the secret place of the Most High, he who, who makes a conscious decision to go into the presence of God, Something happens to him. He shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So when you and I, as believers, take our doctrine past just what we believe about the Bible and put it into action, when we graduate from doctrine to action and we deliberately go into his presence, the Bible tells us that we, we, we walk in his presence. Amen. So how does that work? Well, I just think it's as simple as Opening up the Bible and saying, Father, right here and right now, it's Tuesday morning, it's Wednesday afternoon, I really need to hear from you, God, would you speak to me? God, I open up your word and I'm waiting for you to speak. I believe that as I open up this supernatural book, you're going to reveal things to me and I'm going to have the answers that I need by reading your word. I believe, Lord, that as I pray in tongues, this burden is going to lift off my shoulders. Lord, I believe that as I intercede for my neighborhood, things are going to break open. As we just be deliberate about going into the secret place of the Most High, as we go into His presence... The Bible tells us that something magnificent happens as we take the time and carve out the time to be in His presence, that when we leave that place of connection, oh, we yeah. abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. Supernaturally, where we didn't kind of know we had comfort before or we felt a little bit, maybe a little bit dislocated or a little bit disjointed, the presence of God goes with us into what we do. So he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, he who goes into the presence of God, he who seeks out God and goes for His, goes for his, uh, his touch and His anointing, after we've met with Him, God goes with that person. That's what it's saying. Amen. So as we, as we dwell in that place, we abide in that place. Amen? Amen? And it's really simple. And I think the ways of this world want to sort of get in our mind and say, Oh, yeah, you know, maybe just put off reading the Bible. Maybe just watch the, you know, watch the basketball a little bit longer. Watch the NCAA final, you know, again on the HDVR, you know. Just watch it on your, you know, just, just watch another episode of MASH or, you know, whatever it is. Just, just take it easy for a while and have a rest, you know. No, let's just go into the presence of God, amen. Because when we go into the presence of God, we draw down from that supernatural realm that which doesn't even exist in this world. Like, hallelujah, God has a plan for our lives, which is so much greater than another episode of Friends. You know what I'm saying? Our God is a consuming fire. And as we just come into His presence, He sets us ablaze, amen. So as, as this passage goes on, we see the effect that this has on the psalmist in verse 2. It says, now this is the psalmist, he says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and in Him I will trust. Amen. See, you see, as a refuge, that's a place where when we, are, when we are desperate for help, 
we run to a refuge. But he's also our fortress in the place that when an enemy is coming against us, he's the fortification around our life. So when whatever enemies are coming up against you, you know, they're telling us at the moment that we're in the middle of a global economic meltdown. They're telling us that we're having problems with this and problems with that. And, and medical stuff is going on all over the world. And well, there's all these new diseases coming up. And, and all this trash that the world kind of tells us that's going to be a problem for you. And it's all going to be challenges for you. Well, I don't know about you, but I know that the Word tells us and it tells me that he is my refuge and he is my fortress, amen? Yeah. And as we just decide that, hey, I'm going to be in your presence, God, and you're the one who's going to protect me, and I declare that over my life, and I choose to believe that for my family, hallelujah, he is the one who makes his word true. You don't have to make him your fortress, hallelujah. I don't have to make him my fortress. I just have to stand on his word, and his word tells me that he's going to be my fortress, amen? That's right, amen. That's why the psalmist can say here, my, uh, He is my God, and in Him I will trust. Yes. The Bible says some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. And in this day and age, I just believe it's as simple as just searching out God and saying, God, speak to me again, speak to me again. I remember when I first started pastoring. I was, uh, it was about 10 years ago now. We planted a church straight out of Bible college. Vicky and I got married while I was in Bible college. About a year, maybe 13 months after we got married, we had our first child. Two months after that, we went and planted a church. So you can, you know, we broke all the rules for church planting. You know, you've got to wait until your marriage is two years old and don't have any kids and blah, 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 all this stuff. You've got to have money. You've got to have this. You've got to have... We just, went and, we just went and started having church, man, and God added to it. It was just awesome. Um, but, but in that time, I just was like, God, I just want to seek you out. I just want to see your face. I want to, I want to know your ways. I want this, this church to just... Just go forward in this community and touch lives, the, the lives of the people that you want to see change. And so I decided, you know, if I want to, if I want to be in the presence of God, well, I've got to be praying. I've got to be praying in tongues and I've got to be reading the word. And so I decided, yeah, three hours a day, that's what I'm going to do. Three hours a day, I'm going to do an hour in each. And that's going to be an awesome thing. So I had my prayer list there. And for about the first few weeks, it was like, it was like fire for me. I was like, oh, praying and ah, life was just good. And I just sensed the glory and the grace of God. But after a little while, religion started to get a hold of me. Well, I've got to pray for an hour. Yeah. And I've got to read for an hour. And I've got to pray in tongues for an hour. And one day, don't say it too loudly, but I only prayed for half an hour. <laughs> prayed in tongues for an hour and I read the Bible for an hour, but I only prayed for half an hour. And you know what happened? Condemnation started to get a hold of me. My heart started to come under that, that bondage of religion. Now, Romans 6, Romans 7 tells us that sin gets its power from the law. So if you and I start making a law for ourselves, well, you've got to do this to please God, you've got to do that to please God, all of a sudden, our spiritual connection with God becomes a form of works. And now, I tell you guys, I read more than an hour a day, not because, I, not because I've decided I have to, but because I've just decided I want to, man. I just want to open the Bible up. I want to pray. I want to break into prayer when I'm driving along in the car. I want to break into prayer when I'm with my kids. I want to break into prayer. I want to pray in tongues when I'm running down the road just exercising. I just want to be in God's presence. And it's not about religion, and it's not about a formula, and it's not about what I have to do. It's about just wanting to be in His presence, amen? And as I as I came out of that season, we just saw God move in the church, and it was really exciting. But at the end of the day, our connection with God, our connection with God is really the prime piece of our life. Our connection with God is where, where we really draw down out of the heavenly realms that which we need for our lives. That, and oftentimes, we don't even know what next week is going to hold. At the start of this year, I said to the Lord, at the start of this year, I said to the Lord, well, Lord, what do you want me to do this year? You know, we had 2011 where I didn't do much traveling. And 2010, I canceled a bunch of stuff that was at the end of the year. Some travel to Africa and to Singapore that I had on. I canceled that out. And uh, last year, I just did two little mission trips. One to the Philippines. We did a crusade there and some leaders training. And it was just awesome. God really moved. And we saw a healing like so much and all these salvations and training up the church pastors in how to move in the Holy Ghost. It was just an awesome time. And... And I went to Vietnam as well on some on a mission trip there. And but that was all I did last year. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do this year? What was that? <laughs> yeah, that's all, that's all. Yeah, well, considering what we've been doing years before, that was yeah. 
And when you say it, well, I guess I want to say it like that. Um, <laughs> glory to God. And, and so, you know, as, as, as I just said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I felt like you said to me, you're going to go to America in, in the middle of the year. I thought, awesome. And then, and then I was praying away, and, and just sort of the end of January, I started praying, Lord, okay, well, what do you want me to do in America? And I felt like you said, well, when you go to, to organize things, make sure you go out to California. And I'm like, okay, well, am I going to go by myself when I organize things? And he's like, yeah. Like, I didn't even know what was going to happen. And here I am, I'm here by myself organizing things, and it's, it's the beginning of April. You know, we don't know what tomorrow's going to hold. We don't know even where we're going to be. We don't know what we're going to be doing. But we know that when we're connected to the Lord, we're safe. Amen. When we're, when we're just walking with Him, He keeps us under the shadow of His wing. As we, as we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, if you've got your Bibles, please come with me to the book of 2 Corinthians. And I want to open up this, this, whole, this whole concept here. Of, uh, of, of our connection with the Lord because this passage here in 2 Corinthians really highlights, 2 Corinthians 3 and we're going to start at verse 17, really highlights to us that the, the, the nature of our relationship with God, it's not like the relationship that we have with anyone in this world, it's a spiritual connection that we have with God and he's always wanting to be in fellowship with us. He's all, like, like it says about Enoch, Enoch, he had this testimony about his life that he walked with the Lord and he pleased God. Just by simply walking with the Lord. There's only other one person in the whole of the Bible that says that he walked with the Lord, and that was Noah. Amazing, huh? But that's what pleases God. It's just when we walk with Him. Not in a, not, it doesn't have to be in, a, in an exciting way where, where the, the walls are being torn down everywhere we go, like we'll expect to see out of the two, the two witnesses in the book of Revelation. But God just wants us to, to be with Him all the time. And it says here, watch this, this is so powerful because it really highlights the connection point that we have with God. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Our God is not only a God of doctrine. He has doctrine, but He is not only doctrine. <laughs> Amen? And we're in a, in a culture and in a community and in a world that's so left brain that it's like, we're not going to believe anything about the Bible. We're not going to believe anything about God, I should say, unless I can break it down into systematic theology. And I'm not going to, oh, I'm not going to believe anything that's going to happen. That could be the Holy Spirit because I've just got to understand it all first. <laughs> oh, okay. Does that mean that we're clever enough to understand all that there is about God then? Does that mean that my pea brain can actually fathom everything that there is to know about God? No, I, don't, I think our God actually might be even more transcendent than me. <laughs> and Pastor Glenn did you know that God's more amazing than even Pastor Glenn <laughs> I know it's like it's like God Jesus Pastor Glenn Superman us <laughs> but God is above no it's not like that at all it's like God us and then Superman, because he hasn't got the Holy Spirit. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. Our God is, is, is a living Spirit. And I say that with all reverence. He is a spiritual being. John chapter 4, verse 24 says, God is Spirit. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. If we want to worship God, we must have a spiritual worship, not an intellectual worship. Amen? Not a, not a left brain systematic theology worship. Now, the theology that we have is to keep the constraints on it so we don't get wacky in the spiritual things. But the, but the, but the primacy of it all is our spiritual relationship with God who has redeemed us and called us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Now, it tells us here, now the, Lord the, now the Lord is the Spirit. Now, watch this. Isn't this so beautiful? And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen? Yeah. God's voice to you and God's voice to our world right now is the good voice. Hallelujah. God's voice is the good voice because wherever He is, there is liberty also. So it's not like the Holy Spirit's going to turn up one day and say, uh, I'm really glad you're here at church. Just... Uh, 
just wanted to just just tick a few boxes and not really very excited about doing much <laughs> stuff here today but uh just keep reading your bible and uh pray a few times and whatever but i'm just going to sit over here in the corner and you know just just put my feet up and have a bit of a break no where the holy spirit is where the spirit of the lord is he brings native to himself wherever he goes his liberty comes in. That's why God's voice is the good voice. God's voice is the voice that says, you know that barrier that's in your life? When you hear that voice in your heart that says, hey, you know, God, I've got God, God's speaking to me and I'm getting faith in my heart that I'm going to bust through that barrier in Jesus' name. I've got faith in my heart that that mountain that stands in my path, that mountain's going to move. Amen. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The voice of our, of our brain says, well, how's that all going to happen? Do you think you're good enough to do that? That's the, that's the voice of your, of your doubt. That's the voice of your natural man. That's the voice of my flesh speaking to me that says, Oh, don't you know you sinned this week? Don't you know you, you, dropped, you dropped the bundle for God when you didn't testify about this or that? There's a part of our life, there's a voice in our head that's always speaking to us. You didn't do this good enough. You didn't do that. Uh, am I alone in that? Yeah. Maybe there's one other person in the room. You and me. There's just the two of us. No, I think that's a bit of a, a common thing. But God's voice is the good voice. Because wherever the Spirit is, there is liberty also. So when we feel that inspiration, we know that's the Holy Ghost. When we feel that heaviness, the Bible says that there's no condemnation in Romans chapter 1, 8 verse 1. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, that condemnation is not for the believers. So when we start to come under that heaviness, we say, get off in Jesus' name. Get out in Jesus' name. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I'm going to stand believing that I'm going to walk in that liberty. And if this stuff wants to get on me, I'm going to just take my stand against it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The most simple, the powerful things in God are the simple things. Amen. Amen. When we just keep our relationship with God simple, man, we keep our relationship with God powerful. But if we complicate it and we try to work it all out and systematize it and draw it out too far and try to think too far ahead and plan what the Holy Spirit's going to do, oh, we kind of like dislocate ourselves from that, that liberty of God that just wants to sweep in and change things. You ever have God just sweep in and change things at the last second on you? And you think, wow, that was amazing. God, you really showed up. Well, let's have that space in our heart for the Holy Spirit to just do those things. Amen. Now watch this at the end of this verse. We're going to close up in just a few minutes time. But I want to come and I want to show you something right here. You ever doubt whether what you're hearing is the Holy Spirit? I do sometimes. But this verse actually just addresses that right there. Verse 18. It says, but we all, that means every single one of us. It doesn't mean just Pastor, Pastor Glenn and Pastor Jake and Superman. It means every single one of us. Amen? Every single one of us. This is for all of us. Every single one of us. It says, but we all with an open face... Beholding as a glass, or some versions say as in a mirror, we behold the glory of the Lord and we are being transformed into that same image from glory to glory. So you and I, the, the, the original uh, Greek word for this, uh, for this word here, a glass or mirror, that we behold the vision of the Lord in, the picture of it is in the first century they didn't have mirrors or glass like we do today. We just see a perfect reflection. What they had, what was a mirror back in those days, was a polished piece of bronze. And that bronze, you could make a general view of yourself and you could kind of get a, a basic idea of what you look like or, what, or a glass was this in, 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 in essence the same kind of idea where you would look through a glass but you, you would only just see sort of like the, the vague outlines. You couldn't make details out. And that's what it's like when you and I hear the voice of the Lord. That's what it's like when you and I see what God's up to in our life. It's like, I've got this inspiration on the, on the core of my being, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure what I can see is God, but I can't see the perfect image of it. There's going to be a day when we see God, and we're going to know Him as we are known. There's going to be that day, but that day is in the future. So when we hear God, when we see God moving in our lives now in these days, what we see is like a kind of a, like a vague outline of it all. I don't really see every detail, but I feel it in my heart. I kind of, I get what God's up to, but I don't understand it all. That's what the Bible tells us. And it says, as we behold him, we are being changed into that same image. So if you see what God is speaking to you about in your life, you can bust through that barrier. You can... Cast that mountain into the sea. God says that 
He is the one who's going to be doing that work in your life. Not you. So we just got to keep going through life, just taking the pressure off of ourselves and saying, Lord, Lord, I give it back to you. I give it back to you. And it says that this process, we go from glory to glory. And I'm pretty sure that there'd be a few of you here that you've seen some breakthroughs in your life in the last season. You've seen God do some great things. But the good news is, you woke up this morning again. And that breakthrough that you had, that glory that you experienced in the past, it's not the end. You're awake today because God's got more glory for you to be transformed into. So no matter how great yesterday was, today's going to be even better, amen? Because we're still alive today. If God's got you on this earth for a purpose, and He's got you on this earth to pour out His Spirit through you and to touch this community, to touch the ones that you love, to touch the ones that are around you, to take you into places that you never even thought you'd go. And I love how this verse resolves at the end of verse 18. It says here, All of this happens by the Spirit of the Lord. And it's His work in us that does it. It's His work in our lives that picks us up out of the miry clay and gives us a hope and gives us a future. It's His work that, that grabs a hold of our heart and transforms us into what we desire our life to be. So I just believe in this day, we just got to really just continue to enjoy our connection with God. Enjoy Him as a son. Not as trying to be a minister. Not as trying to be someone who's seeing this or doing that or doing the next thing. Just be a son, hallelujah. Just be a daughter of God Most High. Walk with Him and believe in His promises and, and believe that where the coal face of your Christian faith meets the real world, that you're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. God, over this morning, we close up here. The, the, our time is gone, but Lord, we know that your Holy Spirit is here. And I pray for each and every soul in this room. And Lord, if there's even one here who doesn't know you, I pray you give them confidence and boldness to surrender their life to you right now. For everyone else here, Lord, I just pray confidence and boldness to walk out your plan in this earth for their lives. I thank you, Father, that when you come back, your word tells us that you're coming back for a glorious bride. And God, we just want to have a life that's full of your glory. We don't want to be full of our glory. We want to be full of your glory. If I could just ask everybody here to just close our eyes and, and, and bow our heads and give the ones around us a moment of privacy. I want to ask you if you're in this room today and you're not walking with the Lord or you've never even given your life to Jesus. I want you to know that the Bible tells you that you can be born again. And that means that your life can be spiritually transformed where you become into, you, you get connected to God the creator of the universe who has a plan for your life. He wants to give you peace. He wants to watch over you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to fulfill your heart. And he wants to give you a future. The future that you've always dreamed about is hidden already in your heart because God's given you that destiny. And he wants to reignite that within you and launch you out into all you can be. He loves you with that burning love. And all he wants you to do is understand that we're all sinners and we've all done the wrong thing. The Bible says we've, we've, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says that, 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 that sin, the wages of that sin is death. And, but God's not happy for you to go to hell and experience death. So he sent his son to, to pay the price on the cross for your sin, for my sin, for Pastor Glenn's sin, for everyone's sin. And all we have to do is say, yes, Jesus, I accept your sacrifice to wash away my past because it's all about purity. God is pure. God is perfect. And He wants us to be made perfect again so that He can have fellowship with us. And I just want to ask you this question. Do you want to be made pure today? Do you want all your regrets to be washed away? Do you want all of your weakness to be overcome here today? Because it's as simple as saying, God, I believe and I accept what Jesus has done for me. The Bible says that God is spirit. And He's speaking to you right now in the, in the depth of your heart, beneath even where your ears are hearing me, beneath what your eyes can see. The Spirit of God is speaking to you. And I just want you to open up your heart to Him, but it's your choice. Most of the people in this room have done this before, and we've experienced the truth of His promises. We know that He's real. Why don't you just open up? Open up your heart today and say, Come on in, Lord Jesus. Come on in, Lord Jesus. 
Jesus even said this. He said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father who's in heaven. And I want you to be strong. I want you to be bold if that's you and you, you've opened your heart to him right now. Well, no one's looking around. I want you to just be confident in God and confident in his promises and confident in the words that I've been speaking here today. And I want you to just slip up your hand so I can see you and pray for you. If that's you, you want to give your life to Jesus today. You're ready to do it in this place. I want you to just slip up your hand so I can see you because I really want to pray for you. And even if there's only one person in the house here today who does this, we want you to know that you're worth us making this moment in time for. God loves you. You're not here by an accident. You are here today because God has a plan for your life that he's not willing for you to, to miss out on. And he wants you to hear these words that I'm speaking. Is there anybody here? And I'm not going to put pressure on you, but I want to know. I want, and I want you to know that the God, that, that the God who made the universe is here with, with, a, with an opportunity for you to soar into your future like you've always dreamed. I just want you to slip up your hand and say, Tosh, that's me. Pray for me. And I'm not going to put pressure on anybody. We're not going to do this for much longer. But I just want you to slip up your hand if that's you and say, Tosh, pray for me. Pray for me here and now because I'm ready to give my life to Jesus. I'm ready to walk for righteousness. I'm ready to walk for holiness. I'm ready to walk into the grace of, of, of dignity and into the grace of the future. Is there anyone here this morning? We just want to give you an opportunity to respond to Christ. Well, I haven't seen any hands go up, but that's okay. That's okay. We might be in a room full of people who've already done that. But I want you to know this. If you're here today and you didn't slip up your hand, I want you to know that as you leave this place, when you're driving in the car or when you're in the shower or when you're on your bed with your head on your pillow and you're alone with your thoughts, the Holy Spirit is going to keep ministering to you what you're feeling here and now. Amen. The Holy Spirit is going to keep revealing God's love to you. The Holy Spirit is going to keep calling you home. And I want you to remember this one thing. Your Heavenly Father loves you. And your Heavenly Father is calling you to know Him. And you can just respond to Him anywhere you find yourself. And God is going to turn up and reveal Himself to you. Is that a good word, church? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we just... We come to you right now in an attitude of faith, believing to see you move in this house. But Lord, we just deliberately focus on you. But as we do that, Lord, we just close this service in prayer. We pray, Father, have your way in each and every life. And those who need to leave right now, we bless them. And we say, Lord, that you go with them as they go into the world today and take care of the affairs of what's before them. For those who want to stay behind, Lord God, we open up the altars right now and we just pray your hand be upon us. But Lord, for those who need to leave, for those who have want to leave and for those who need to go, we just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you go with them, keep them strong, keep them safe. And Lord, we just give that authority of your hand into their lives right now. We pray, Lord, that as we all leave this house today, that you go with us and we Thank you, Father, that we're going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We're going to see things change this week. We're going to see breakthroughs happen in our families this week. We're going to see breakthroughs happen in our lives this week. And we pray it all in the wonderful name of Jesus and everyone who believes said, Amen. 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 Glory to God.